Hey guys, welcome back to Pygame Basics. So today we're gonna to learn how to draw shapes on the screen and we'll learn how to move them and even create some bouncing objects. So we'll start from the framework that we made in the previous video, create the display. Now where we're going to be writing our functions to draw the objects is gonna be within this game loop, right? So we're gonna redraw the object every single time the frame refreshes. So the first thing you wanna do anytime you're drawing anything is run the display.fill function. So what this does is refills the background. So every single frame, you have a fresh canvas to start from. And this takes a tuple, which is gonna be the RGB triplet for the color of the background that we want. So the RGB triplet for white is 255, 255, 255. So if we run this, we have a white background. So now that we've filled in our background, it's gonna be important to learn how to draw shapes. So I recommend looking over the documentation for Pygame, and I have a link to this in the description. So this page has a description of all the functions that are available to you in Pygame. So the ones that we wanna look at right now are draw. So you click draw up here, and we have all these options to draw onto the screen. So rect, polygon, circle, ellipse, arc, line, etc. So we'll look at line right now. So if we click on line, We'll get a little bit of an explanation on what the function is, what it expects, and what each argument is. So let's look at it a little closely. So line expects a surface. A surface actually just means like our display. Uh, a color, and this is gonna be an RGB triplet again. A start position in XY, an end position in XY, and a width, which is gonna be the thickness of the line. So let's go ahead and write this function in our code. So let's say pi game, dot draw dot line and then we could put in those arguments that we talked about so the first one was the surface which is our display the second one was the color so let's give it an rgb of zero 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 which is a black line and then we have our start and end positions of the line pygame does something interesting with its xy axis the zero zero point is on the top left of the screen you would expect it to be on the bottom left of the screen if you're used to just math axes but it actually is on the top left of the screen, so it's a little counterintuitive at first, so definitely keep an eye out for that. So we'll put this at, let's say, zero for X to about 400 for Y, and then 1000 for X, so this is gonna take up the whole screen in X, and let's say 400 for Y. So this is gonna look like one horizontal line at 400 pixels from the top, and it's gonna take up the whole display in the X direction. And then we have to give it a thickness value. Uh, the default value is just one, so one pixel thick, but we should change that to a value of let's say 10. So if I run this, then I get my line. Let's draw some other objects onto the screen. So going back to our documentation and going back to where we were, we can click draw. And I wanna draw a circle, so I clicked circle. Now the arguments are surface, color, center, radius, and then a width, which is going to be the outline of the circle if we don't want to fill it in. If we want to fill it in, then we use uh, a width value of zero, which is the default value anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. So after we just we fill our background, after we draw the line, we want to draw a ball dot circle display. And then we want to give it a color. So let's give it red. So RGB means the first one is red. So I'll say 25500. And then oh, I already forgot. <laughs> center, center. So center, we'll center this at X500, which is going to be the middle of our screen, right? Because we have a thousand pixels in the X direction. And then let's give it a Y of, I don't know, 200. So this will be above the line, right? Because the Y axis starts at zero at the top of the screen. And then the last thing we need to do is give it a radius. So I'll give it a radius of 15. And we want to keep the thickness at zero because we want to fill in the, the circle. So let's run this. And we have a circle onto the screen. Now I think it'll be fun to have this circle bounce against this line as if this line was the ground. So let's do that. My recommendation, and this is this is gonna be huge, my recommendation is anytime you create objects onto the screen that you're manipulating in some way, whether that be moving, collision checking, anything, is make a new class with that object. Even if it's just gonna be one instance that you're gonna make, I still recommend make it into a new class. So I'm gonna create a class called ball, and then we're gonna define the init method. 
And again, if you're not comfortable with object-oriented programming, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube, and I probably will make a series myself where I go over basics of object-oriented programming, but I'm gonna assume you understand what an init method is and just the basics of creating classes. So what should I bring in as an argument to the init method? Well, it depends on what you think is gonna be different in all the instances that you're gonna make. So we're only gonna make one instance, so nothing's gonna be different, but that's sort of what you will be thinking about as you do it. And we'll definitely kind of go over a lot of that when we make our games and other projects. So what should be our attributes? Well, that's a little bit different of a question. So if our any arguments are supposed to be the things that are gonna change per instance, I think our attributes should be things that will change within that instance. So for instance, if we're gonna bounce the ball, then the y value will change. So I'll say self.y equals 200 to start. And I also think we should give it some velocity. So self.velocity equals, let's give it 10. So this should be good for our init method for now. Now the next method we should make is a draw method. So this draw method will draw the object to the Pi game screen. And so this is where we're gonna want this function right here within the draw method. And that way, when we do get back down here, we don't have to write that function again from Pygame. We can just say our ball instance dot draw. So there's our Pygame circle. And we should change these values to match whatever we have as attributes. So y value is this one right here, because this is our tuple for center. So now that we've created the class a ball, we do need an instance of the ball that we're going to use within our game. So I like to create all these instances right below the function definition for game, but above the game loop, of course, because we don't want to create a new instance every frame. We want to keep the same instance throughout the game. So I'll say ball equals ball, and there's no argument to the init right now. And then instead of writing pygame.draw.circle down here, we can just say ball.draw. And that's going to run this method, the ball to the display. So let's go ahead and run this. And so far, the same thing. But now we have a better framework for us to manipulate the ball. So let's go ahead and do that. So another method we want is move, where we want to update the velocity, update the position of the ball. First, let's update the velocity. So I'll say self.velocity plus equals some acceleration value. And we'll set that up here above the class. So a lot of times you'll see me set attributes that I want to use over multiple classes uh, up here above the definitions of the classes. So I'm going to call that, let's say 10. And again, I don't know if these numbers are going to look good or not. We're just going to try it. And then let's update the position. Self.y plus equals self.velocity. Now, of course, is this going to happen if I run this right now? Well, I'm going to run this and no, the ball is still not moving because we haven't called the move method every time we refresh the screen. So to do that, we're going to have to do that within our while loop. So I recommend moving things before we draw. So before we do any of the draw stuff that we're doing right over here, and I'm just going to organize this a little bit, then here's where I expect us to move our instances of the classes that we've made. So I'll say ball.move. This is where we move our ball. This is where we draw everything we want to the screen. And this is updating the screen. So that was a lot, but let's go ahead and run this and see where we're at. So that was way too fast. <laughs> so let's drop that acceleration down to let's say one. And that's a little bit better. I even want it slower than that. Okay, we ran into a really, really instructive error here. So Pygame does not understand positions that are decimal numbers. So we got an error that says integer argument expected got float when I changed the acceleration to 0.5. So what happened is the velocity changed from 10 to 10.5. And then the y position changed from 200 to some decimal value, I guess 210.5 maybe, or 220.5. And then from there, it tried to draw at the 220.5 pixel, which is not a thing. So anytime we give a position, we should probably say integer if there's a chance that it could be not an integer. So let's go ahead and try this now. There we go. So our ball is falling. Now to have this ball bounce, we need to write a condition that reverses the velocity whenever the ball hits this line. So to do that, I think it's a good place to do it in the move method. So I'll say if self.y 
is greater than, so greater than means below or equal to the y value that we used for the line, which I think was 400. Then self.velocity equals negative self.velocity. So let's try this now. And we have the ball bouncing. So that was a lot. So I think it would be useful to review what we've done so far. So we had our generic setup with the game loop. And what we did was we created a background and then we created a line that we're drawing every frame. Then we created a ball class, which holds information about a shape, such as its position, its velocity. And we've created methods to manipulate it in some way, whether it's move it, draw it to the Pygame screen. Then we've created an instance of this class that we're gonna use in our game and we called it ball. And then we've drawn the ball every frame. So I recommend reviewing this sort of setup of creating objects, because this is what we're gonna be using for the rest of these tutorials, as well as any of the projects that we do in any of our games.